We continue on today with chapter 7, A State of Grace. The Holy Spirit will always guide you truly, because your joy is His. This is His will for everyone, because He speaks for the kingdom of God, which is joy. Following Him is therefore the easiest thing in the world, and the only thing that is easy, because it is not of the world. It is therefore natural. The world goes against your nature, being out of accord with God's laws. The world perceives orders of difficulty in everything. This is because the ego perceives nothing as wholly desirable. By demonstrating to yourself there is no order of difficulty in miracles, you will convince yourself that, in your natural state, there is no difficulty at all, because it is a state of grace. Grace is the natural state of every son of God. When he is not in a state of grace, he is out of his natural environment and does not function well. Everything he does becomes a strain because he was not created for the environment that he has made. He therefore cannot adapt to it, nor can he adapt it to him. There is no point in trying. A son of God is happy only when he knows he is with God. That is the only environment in which he will not experience strain, because that is where he belongs. It is also the only environment that is worthy of him, because his own worth is beyond anything he can make. Consider the kingdom you have made, and judge its worth fairly. Is it worthy to be a home for a child of God? Does it protect his peace and shine love upon him? Does it keep his heart untouched by fear and allow him to give always without any sense of loss? Does it teach him that this giving is his joy and that God himself thanks him for his giving? That is the only environment in which you can be happy. You cannot make it any more than you can make yourself. It has been created for you as you were created for it. God watches over his creation, children, and denies them nothing. Yet when they deny him, they do not know this, because they deny themselves everything. You who could give the love of God to everything you see and touch and remember are literally denying heaven to yourself. I call upon you to remember that I have chosen you to teach the kingdom to the kingdom. There are no exceptions to this lesson, because the lack of exceptions is the lesson. Every son of God who returns to the kingdom with this lesson in his heart has healed the sonship and given thanks to God. Everyone who learns this lesson has become the perfect teacher because he has learned it of the Holy Spirit. When a mind has only light, it knows only light. Its own radiance shines all around it and extends out into the darkness of other minds, transforming them into majesty. The majesty of God is there for you to recognize and appreciate and know. Recognizing the majesty of God as your brother is to accept your own inheritance God gives only equally. If you recognize his gift in anyone, you have acknowledged what he has given you. Nothing is so easy to recognize as truth. This is the recognition that is immediate, clear, and natural. You have trained yourself not to recognize it, and this has been very difficult for you. Out of your natural environment, you may well ask, what is truth? Since truth is the environment by which and for you were created, you do not know yourself because you do not know your Creator. You do not know your creations because you do not know your brothers, who created them with you. I have already said that only the whole Sonship is worthy to be co-creator with God, because only the whole Sonship can create like Him. Whenever you heal a brother by recognizing his worth, you are acknowledging his power to create and yours. He cannot have lost what you recognize, and you must have the glory you see in him. 
He is co-creator with God with you. Deny his creative power, and you are denying yours, and that of God who created you. You cannot deny part of truth. You do not know your creations because you do not know their creator. You do not know yourself because you do not know yours. Your creations cannot establish your reality any more than you can establish God's. But you can know both. Being is known by sharing. Because God shared his being with you, you can know him. But you must also know all he created to know what they have shared. Without your father, you will not know your fatherhood. The kingdom of God includes all his sons and their children, who are like the fa sons as they are like the father. Know then the sons of God, and you will know all creation. And from the workbook lesson 55, today's review includes the following. I am determined to see things differently. What I see now are but signs of disease, des disaster, and death. This cannot be what God created for his beloved Son. The very fact that I see such things is proof that I do not understand God. Therefore I also do not understand his Son. What I see tells me that I do not know who I am. I am determined to see the witnesses to the truth in me, rather than those which show me an illusion of myself. What I see is a form of vengeance. The world I see is hardly the representation of loving thoughts. It is a picture of attack on everything by everything. It is anything but a reflection of the love of God and the love of His Son. It is my own attack thoughts that give rise to this picture. My loving thoughts will save me from this perception of the world and give me the peace God intended me to have. I can escape from the world by giving up attack thoughts. Herein lies salvation and nowhere else. Without attack thoughts, I could not see a world of attack. As forgiveness allows love to return to my awareness, I will see a world of peace and safety and joy. And it is this I choose to see in place of what I look on now. I do not perceive my own best interest. How could I recognize my own best interests when I do not know who I am? What I think are my best interests would merely bind me closer to the world of illusions. I am willing to follow the guide God has given me to find out what my own best interests are, recognizing that I cannot perceive them by myself. I do not know what anything is for. To me, the purpose of everything is to prove that my illusions about myself are real. It is for this purpose that I attempt to use everyone and everything. It is for this that I believe the world is for. Therefore, I do not recognize its real purpose. The purpose I have given the world has led to a frightening picture of it. Let me open my mind to the world's real purpose by withdrawing the one I have given it and learning the truth about it. So today, we open ourselves to vision once again, beginning off with, I am determined to see things differently. The world of fragmented perceptions, of individual unique sights and sounds, is not my home, is not my destiny. I sink inward in silence today, closing my eyes, reviewing these thoughts, 
letting go, letting God take me now. I have creations that I created with God as co-creator. These creations are spirit. I cannot know the spirit until I forgive all that was made by the ego. The ego was a substitute for God, made to take the place of God, made to take the place of my identity as the Christ. Today I let go all ego thoughts, all attack thoughts. I sink very deep in stillness. I let go of the thoughts of the past, thoughts of the future, thoughts of ambition, thoughts of concern, thoughts of worry, and sink into the kingdom of heaven. <laughs>